Bauxite is processed through a toxic process into alumina, which is then converted into aluminum. For every ton of alumina produced, there are three tons of toxic red sludge waste created. Although the highly toxic red sludge poses deadly risks to life and the environment, there is an increased effort to build more bauxite mines in critical areas of the world, with key government leaders ignoring the strong objections of their people. This is another example of the poisoning of our planet, which must be stopped. There are two types of bauxite. There are lateritic bauxites, also called silicate bauxites, and there are karst bauxites, called carbonate bauxites. The carbonate bauxites occur predominantly in Europe and Jamaica. The lateritic bauxites are found mostly in the countries of the tropics. Large deposits of lateritic bauxites are in high production in Australia, Brazil, Guinea, India, and Guyana, Suriname and Venezuela. The mineralogy of the bauxites has a significant impact on the operation of the Bayer process for alumina production. The lateritic bauxites are preferred for producing aluminum. In a Bayer plant, which is the usual method used to extract the alumina to make aluminum, bauxite mineralogy affects the efficiency of the process by driving the chemical reactions occurring throughout the Bayer process. The content and morphology of the alumina, the bearing minerals, as well as of other impurities with varying solubilities in caustic soda, are critical in determining alumina extraction, end product purity, caustic soda losses, and energy consumption. Red sludge kills four and injures over 120 people in Hungary. State of emergency declared. October 5, 2010. Red sludge from an alumina plant reservoir rolled through three different Hungarian villages, resulting in multiple casualties. The red sludge is a byproduct of bauxite refining. Bauxite refining is part of the, the production of aluminum. Hungary declared a state of emergency in three western counties on Tuesday, the day after a torrent of toxic red sludge from an alumina plant reservoir tore through Kolontar and two other villages, killing four people injuring 120 people with chemical burns and eye irritation caused by the lead and other highly corrosive elements, and six people were reported missing. The red sludge, generated during bauxite refining, burst out of a containment reservoir at the nearby Akai Timfogar ZRT plant, owned by MALZRT. The Natural Disaster Unit and DU and MAL both denied a report the sludge ponds dam had broken at a second point. The flood of toxic red sludge, estimated at about 700,000 cubic meters, threw cars off roads and damaged bridges and homes, forcing the evacuation of about 400 residents. On October 5, after visiting Kolontar, Zoltan Isles, State Secretary for the Environment Ministry, said that it is the worst chemical accident in Hungary's history. Mal ZRT said in a statement on Tuesday there had been no sign of the impending disaster adding the last examination of the reservoir pond on Monday had shown nothing untoward. If there is no visible evidence of dam failure on the same day of such a breach, this means there is a great danger posed by these sludge ponds. Mel also said the red sludge did not qualify as hazardous waste according to European Union standards, and added that 96 to 98 percent of the sludge had remained in the reservoir. How lucky! Only 2% of the red sludge came out. Just envision what it would have been like if most of the sludge had escaped. The NDU defined the red mud on its website as a byproduct of alumina production. The thick, highly alkaline substance has a caustic effect on the skin. The sludge contains heavy metals, such as lead, and is slightly radioactive. Inhaling its dust can cause lung cancer. The red sludge is slightly radioactive. That's wonderful. The NDU recommended that people clean off the sludge immediately with lots of water to neutralize the substance. The National Health Authority said, based on sludge samples, there was no acute health risk from radiation. The great masses will more easily fall victims to a big lie than to a small one. Adolf Hitler said that. The National Health Authority said, based on sludge samples, there was no acute health risk from radiation. Overnight, 
Teens dressed in a specialist protective clothing and masks hosed down streets to wash away the red sludge. The state of emergency was declared in Vesprim, Giormos in Sopran and Vas. Troops in protective gear held to clean up the spill, while plaster is being poured into the Markle River to bind the sludge and stop further flooding. If they run out of plaster, they can use shit. Some observers voiced concerns that the sludge could reach the Rawa and Danube rivers. The Danube is a major European waterway. It also flows through the northern part of Bulgaria, prompting fears of a wider contamination in the region. The bauxite residue now covers 40 square kilometers south of the Danube River, and has caused the deaths of eight Hungarians and injured at least 150 people. The residue also has caused the extinction of life in a local river, and as yet unknown environmental damage elsewhere. Hungarian disaster revives Vietnam's bauxite mine fears. November 8, 2010 Protests in Vietnam against plans for six massive bauxite mines coupled with fears of Chinese economic imperialism have revived following last month's toxic spill in Hungary that killed nine people and destroyed three villages. In early 2008, the Vietnamese government announced a plan to extract bauxite and process the ore. Critics pointed out the potential devastation to the ecologically sensitive Central Highlands. The Central Highlands are home to many of Vietnam's ethnic minorities and cash crops, and the risks of storing vast quantities of the toxic red sludge upriver from the densely populated Mekong Delta are considered too great. Critics have collected more than 3,000 signatures from Vietnamese intellectuals in Vietnam and overseas to protest the mines in Vietnam's central highlands. The government promised a full environmental impact assessment of the projects last summer but has not published any so far. Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung has called the bauxite mine, a major policy of the party and the state. The government's master plan calls for investments of around 15 billion U.S. dollars by 2025 to tap Vietnam's rich bauxite reserves, estimated to be the third largest in the world. The state-run Vietnamese company Vincomen, Vietnam National Coal and Mineral Industries Group, has begun building an aluminum factory and is preparing for major mining operations in Lam Duong and Dac Nong provinces. The government of Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung has grudgingly agreed to review the bauxite mine and alumina production projects planned for the Central Highlands after receiving a much-publicized letter from 1,500 noted former politicians and intellectuals calling for new studies of the scheme. But although government spokesmen have said it is necessary to listen to concerns of the public and intellectuals, the tone and body language suggest there is no enthusiasm for halting the development of what, at 5.5 billion tons, is said to be among the world's largest reserves of bauxite. Since the protests against the development started in 2008, the Hanoi government has used all the regular powers of a one-party authoritarian state to try to suppress the movement. Some critics have been detained and an enormous amount of government energy has been spent on sabotaging a website, Bauxite Vietnam, created by opponents. Among those arrested was the webmaster who was forced to give up the site's password so government hackers could try to erase it or infect it with viruses. A co-owner of the site said there has been widespread hacking of the site, all from China-based addresses. The site has taken aim on security and environmental grounds at bauxite mines run by the Chinese state aluminum company Chalco in central Vietnam. Chalco has opened two bauxite mining and processing plants in central Vietnam in the last two years. Four more are under consideration. On August 25, 2010, the Indian government rejected the Vedanta bauxite mine. Amnesty International described the Indian government's decision to reject the bauxite mine project in Orissa's Niamjiri Hills as a landmark victory for the human rights of indigenous communities. India's Ministry of Environment and Forests rejected the mine project proposed by a subsidiary of UK-based Vedanta Resources and the state-owned Orissa Mining Corporation, after finding that the project already extensively violates forest and environmental laws and would perpetrate abuses against the Dongria Khond Adivasi and other communities on the hills.
Amnesty International's Asia-Pacific Deputy Director, Madhu Malhotra, said the Dongria Kond and other local communities have been struggling for years for this decision, which is a very welcome one. The companies and the Orissa government should now guarantee that they will not attempt to simply move the project to another site without ensuring adequate safeguards. They must ensure they will respect the human rights of indigenous and local communities wherever the companies operate. The Belo Monte Dam is a proposed hydroelectric dam complex on the Xingu River in the state of Para, Brazil. The Xingu River in northeast Brazil is 1,230 miles long and is the southeast tributary of the Amazon River. The planned installed capacity of the dam complex would be 11,233 megawatts, which would make it the second largest hydroelectric dam complex in Brazil, and the world's third largest in installed capacity, behind Three Gorges Dam China and Itaipu Dam Brazil Paraguay. Electricity from the dams would presumably power the extraction and refinery of large mineral deposits in Para, such as bauxite the raw material for aluminum. Brazil has some of the largest deposits of bauxite in the world. However, there is opposition to the dam's construction regarding their impacts to the region's environment. There is far more to consider than toxic red sludge from bauxite mining. The dam would destroy 1,000 square kilometers of forest, flood a third of the capital city, Altamira, and create a lake of stagnant, mosquito-infested water of about 500 square kilometers, which would make life in the rest of the city very difficult. 30,000 people would have to be relocated. In 1989, the World Bank pulled out of a plan to build this Belo Monte series of huge hydroelectric dams on the Xingu River. The dams were judged to be a potential social and environmental catastrophe highlighted by the largest combined demonstration by the indigenous tribal people of the area ever staged. Outgoing Brazil President Lula revived the plans for Belo Monte during his eight-year reign, which has been fought by activists since it resurfaced. New President Dilma Rousseff, a former Marxist rebel, has a long track record of not supporting environmental protection. But at Rousseff's inauguration speech January 1st, she appeared to oppose the Belo Monte Dam. Rousseff told the crowd, I consider that Brazil has a sacred mission to show the world that it is possible for a country to grow rapidly without destroying the environment. We are and will continue to be the world champions in clean energy, a country that will always know how to grow in a healthy and balanced fashion. The speech was interpreted as a sign that the new administration would act on issues such as clean energy and deforestation. However, after a series of government official resignations and firings over the Belo Monte issue, Rousseff has authorized work to start, despite that authorization being illegal under Brazilian law. On January 27, 2011, the Brazilian government has issued a partial installation license allowing the Belo Monte Dam complex to break ground on the margins of the Amazon's Xingu River, despite egregious disregard for human rights and environmental legislation the unwavering protests of civil society and condemnations by its Federal Public Prosecutor's Office MPF. The license was approved by Brazil's environmental agency Obama, despite overwhelming evidence that the dam building consortium Nordenergia NESA has failed to comply with dozens of social and environmental conditions required for an installation license. The partial installation license, non-existent under Brazilian environmental legislation, will allow for NESA to open accessed roads and initiate forest clearing at dam construction sites in an area of 2,118 acres. The largest single producer of bauxite in the world is CBG, C. Bauxite de Guinea. CBG operations are located in the west of Guinea, close to the border with Guinea-Bissau. Since opening in 1973, the operations produced over 260 metric tons of bauxite for export. CBG was established in the early 1970s as a 49 to 51 percent joint venture between the Guinean government and the Halco Partnership, originally comprising a group of international aluminum industry participants. Since 2004, 
Alcoa and Rio Tinto Alcan have each had a 45% stake in Halco, having gradually bought out most of the other founder members. In mid-1999, the government invited Alcoa to take over management of the project. The land that is now Guinea belonged to a series of empires until France colonized it in the 1890s and made it part of French West Africa. Guinea declared its independence from France on October 2, 1958. Since its independence, Guinea has had autocratic rulers in which one person possesses unlimited power, who have made Guinea one of the poorest countries in the world, despite extraordinary aluminum-rich resources. Guinea possesses over 25 billion metric tons of bauxite, possibly up to one half of the world's reserves. In addition, Guinea's mineral wealth includes more than 4 billion tons of high-grade iron ore, significant diamond and gold deposits, and undetermined quantities of uranium. Bauxite mining and alumina operations in northwest Guinea provide about 80% of Guinea's foreign exchange. The Guinea rulership has changed hands a couple times since its independence in 1958. The first president ruled by violent repression until he died in 1984. The next ruler seized power by a quick coup, and ruled until he died in 2008. In December 2008, Mao Zedatis Kamara seized control of Guinea as the head of a junta. In September 2009, the junta ordered its soldiers to attack people who had gathered to protest any attempt by Kamara to become president. The soldiers went on a rampage of rape, mutilation, and murder. Eventually free elections took place in 2010 after disputes and delays. The leader of the opposition, Alpha Cond, of the rally of the Guinean People Party, RPG, was declared the victor in a November 7 runoff in Guinea's presidential election. Cond promised to reform the security sector and review mining contracts if elected. CBG's Guinea operation is also facing reducing ore grades, as high-grade material is mined out.